previously on the A Question Show. Cannabis is unique. And I think outside of that, the industry really wants people that are devoted to cannabis. So I think showing Thanks. that you're willing to invest in a cannabis education, that you really want to be in cannabis, I think that's going to put you to the top of the list for employers because one, they're not going to have to spend the six months to a year teaching you the yeah. basics, but two, they're, they're going to know that this person really cares about it for the long haul. Can't afford, that's why I'm front line, hand the sword. I do this all for myself, not the cash or no damn award. I need intelligence to craft my bars. I need the medicine that grows up a vessel from the hands of God. I need inheritance to slash the odds, create a pipeline to the well while you grasp the straws. Oh, uh, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions. Eight questions. Welcome back to the Eight Questions Show. We have our man Mike Z here. You know, Mike, I gotta ask you this question. You're you're the cannabis coach. You wrote the cannabis business book, so I'm assuming that you know a lot about cannabis. Our audience is assuming that you know a lot about cannabis. So when it comes to marijuana itself, are there different types of marijuana hive? Yeah, wow, absolutely. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Um, are there different types of marijuana highs? So, gosh, where do I start? You could argue that every single one is different. You could argue that they're all the same. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think anyone would argue that actually. Um, well, look, it starts with, let's, let's start with the plant and the person. Okay. We had two variables there already. You know, there's so many different genetic varieties of cannabis. You know, and everyone always wants to try the new stuff, right? Like, the, yeah. and so every plant, even, even if you have the same exact genetics, you could grow that same exact genetic and grow it, you know, take the same seeds, grow it, 10 plants. Those plants might come out with different cannabinoid compositions and mm. different terpene profiles and different flavonoids. So it's like, these are the chemicals within the cannabis plant that our bodies react to now this is a fairly new science you know it's only about in the 60s or 70s i don't remember the exact date when we R dr rafael mishulam discovered how the endocannabinoid system operates and that it even exists in humans and so we have some understanding of how, you know, different cannabinoids like THC, CBD are the common ones that everyone uh, has probably heard of. You know, we have some understanding of how they work out of the, you know, it's, it's actually argued how many cannabinoids we've discovered, how many terpenes. Some people say 100, some people say north of 200. You know, so a lot of these things we don't have definitive answers on and depending on who you ask they'll you'll, you'll get different data but you know we have some understanding of you know linalool or lemonine these are terpenes we'll have or myrcene you know you, get, you have a mango out here mangoes have <laughs> myrcene because terpenes are not unique to cannabis mm. a lot of plants have terpenes and they're like think of it as like essential oils and terpenes in particular are related to the, the scent and the smell that you'll get from your cannabis. Um, so different combinations of terpenes with different combinations of cannabinoids will have different effects on someone. So, you know, traditionally people talk about, oh, is this a sativa or, or an indica <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or a hybrid? <laughs> and that's all nonsense. Everything... First of all, all most <laughs> modern cannabis genetically is a hybrid today. And mm. second of all, it doesn't matter mm. <laughs> because it's all about the terpenes and the cannabinoid content, the composition. So it's like you're, you're really thinking about maybe 200, 300 variables that we're aware of. And maybe we know how like 10 or 20 of them work kind of but it's a whole combination of them. So we don't really know, you know, that being said, 
we we do know a little bit. So you might have seen cannabis products that are like, this one's for sleep, or this one's for energy, or this one's for yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. There's some truth to that. So, you know, based on the terpene profiles, you could we we do have some good data that suggests, you know, if you have this composition, that mango will make you sleepy, you know, that mercy and too much of it and you'll be in the couch or or whatever. <laughs> so there's there's that difference. But then there's also the different consumption methods. So, you know, if I'm having, for example, a dab, which is concentrated cannabis extract where, you know, maybe I'm getting way more THC than I would from smoking any herb that you would ever get. Or if I have an edible that's, you know, from five milligrams to 500 milligrams of THC, you know, that's, you could have a five milligram cannabis high going back to the dosage. It's like, that could be a very mild, you know, the, the, I think the scientifically accepted answer for a minimum effective dose for the average person, whatever that is, you know, who is not a consumer, not a heavy consumer, 2.5 milligrams of THC. It's pretty powerful. And you'll probably feel like on the binary scale, you'll know that something changed within your organism, right? <laughs> 2.5 milligrams. <laughs> what is going this on is here? Different. Yeah. This is different. Yeah. Now, if you bump that up to, again, depends on how you're consuming. If I had 20 milligrams, you know, if I had 20% THC flour, I would need to, let me, my math could be wrong here, but I think I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna avoid that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm <laughs> not even gonna fly, risk yeah. getting into the. When the listeners are like, um, <laughs> yeah. hold on, you got so to at twenty percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but you know, look, if I had a twenty milligram edible, me personally, I'd probably feel pretty good. I'd probably be very stoned for several hours. If I had a fifty milligram edible, I might be tripping. Really. I, and I'll tell you this, I have a friend, <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to my buddy, Sid, who's a, a cult, he's, he's in the industry, has had a large cultivation in Oregon, California, he's now growing in New York State. Once, once I hung out with him, he gave me some Skittles that, you know, are grown indoor, state-of-the-art facility, and this was, this was serious, <laughs> yeah. serious weed, and I discovered that because something happened that I'd never experienced before, which is, you know, he, he packed a bong for me and he said, Mike, this is for you. And I was like a full, I was like, I was like, this is more than I need. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, no nonsense, you know, enjoy. And I was, you know, I was like, well, you know, as, as an independent cannabis researcher myself, I said, you know, <laughs> this one's for science. As a researcher, <laughs> you know, as a researcher myself, I got to try this. Yeah. Yep. And, sure. and so I took a few bong hits, like, probably five or six big bong rips of this really gorgeous Skittles. I, I still remember it to this day. And, and, you know, we're hanging out, we're having like drinks on, on, on this gorgeous terrace in, in New York City. It was the summer. And I realized like, you know, maybe like 15, 20 minutes past, I realized I am tripping. <laughs> like legit, like as if I had taken some mushrooms, not like full on, but like, you know, I, I've realized that things are not normal anymore. Like the way, the way things look and the way my body feels, I'm just like, oh my. And I realized well, I, I, if you would have told me before that moment that you could trip from smoking weed, I would have said like, no, no way. But <laughs> let me, let me tell you. If you smoke some Skittles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. These, <laughs> these are Skittles, Skittles, man. They, but, um, yeah. So look, there's, there's the, the cannabis is a psychedelic, right? It's a psychotropic. It can, and if you eat too many edible, you know, you, you mentioned earlier that, that people feeling like they're dying, you know, I would caution anyone, and everyone with edibles, especially if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what the right dosage is for you. And, and you don't know if this product is actually made by someone where whatever dosage they're telling you is actually what's active <laughs> yeah. because that's a whole other can of worms. But I, I have a question for him too. Oh yeah. man, I got such a funny question. So, in, terms but, of, in terms of like, okay, he's got a point. I, I he's got a point. That you have too much, too much 
And you could be in a very, very miserable, uncomfortable place for several hours, you know, until that's out of your system. I, I've, I've heard stories of people, you know, there's the famous Maureen Dowd, New York Times article where she ate some edibles and was like, you know, there's like auditory hallucination, you know, you feel Whoa. like you're kind of, that's you know, went it, way it, too it's far. extremely uncomfortable in I the body. Imagine. Because think about it, you know, it's, you're supposed to, a little will promote homeostasis and restore balance, but a lot could throw that balance completely out the window for several hours. So, you know, there's a wide range of cannabis size. If we have a listener right now that is extremely high (laughs) and they're on the edge of having a nervous breakdown, (laughs) what Reassuring words, can you tell them to calm them down? <laughs> First of all, this, wait it out. <laughs> <laughs> this, this too shall pass. Got it. <laughs> but Got it. there are actually a couple of things you can do. It might not be as fast acting as someone would like, but black pepper, you know, the, the terpenes in black pepper, I forget the name of it, actually counteracts the THC effect. And CBD actually counteracts the THC effect. Interesting. So, you know, in theory, if you had way too much THC and you're bugging out and you're freaking out and you're, you know, your body's feeling hot and itchy or whatever uncomfortable um, sensations that might create for you, you should get a bunch of CBD in you. And obviously, you want to make sure it's not gas station CBD. <laughs> not gas station CBD. Not gas, you want some, not yeah, gas station CBD. some actual tested, you know, CBD that <laughs> a lot of CBD products don't contain any CBD because there's not really any testing or accountability. But you want to go get oh, a quality brand, you know, someone that's proven, someone that has integrity, someone that's been able to scale a business because they have quality products. Um, you know, and some CBD would help. And drink a lot of water. Always stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. Try to go to sleep. If you're way too high right now, just, you know, <laughs> your sleep. bed is a safe place. And the first listen to is like, I tried it all. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, have, I have a question. I know um, Snoop Dogg was on, uh, it, it's a show called The Breakfast Club. If you're in New York City, you know, you know what it is. Yep, yep. Huge show. He was on there and they were, and they were talking about like different, strands of weed and then he was and so, <laughs> so they asked him they said that to, uh Charlamagne the guy was like yeah i mean I, you, you hear all the time where like all these people start smoking like moon rock he said man moon rock is there he said but sun rock he said i don't i don't smoke sun rock he said it is and he, he said and it's me he said so <laughs> so Charlamagne goes like no you rock sun rock so he goes yeah. um so some of the guy was like no he said snoopy you I mean, come on, you've been doing this for, for decades. He said, I know. And I've tried it before. Mm-hmm. That's how I know my ceiling is moon rock. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, trust me, I'd have, I've had all this. I've had all the quote unquote strands. I've done it. I've had the big bond. I had to, I've had all of it. And I tried it. He said, I've never felt that in my life. And I didn't want to feel it again. So wow. I don't know what it is that's in sun rock or whatever yeah. but he said even snoop dogg said he's not gonna do, <laughs> do wow. that again a lot of this reminds me of in a weird way cooking and what i mean by that is you take like the ingredients of cooking you're making like spaghetti sauce and you have tomatoes and basil and all these different fresh ingredients and if the tomato is grown in a certain way it's going to affect the flavor if the basil is grown in a certain way it's going to affect affect the flavor that's a good point uh if you do it over a uh, wood fire, that's going to impact the flavor. If you do it over a stove, it can impact. So it's like there's all of these little subtle nuances will have a completely different culinary experience in that example. But it sounds like with the terpenes and the manner in which it's grown and the manner in which it's consumed has kind of an unpredictability of its effects in cannabis. Absolutely. And, and even further than that, even your state, when you're taking Mm. the cannabis or using the cannabis like i I gave the example with edibles on a previous episode where if if you just had a a big meal and then you have an edible versus having it on an empty stomach you're gonna have a different experience Mm. so you know there's a lot of factors 
And that's why it's important for people to really get educated so they can consume it or use it in a safe way. So pretty much, Mike, to wrap up is the question or the answer to the question, are there different type of highs is yes and no. Because like you just mentioned earlier, you know, if you eat an edible, whatever, whatever is in the edible, if you eat it on a full stomach, it could be you experience one way. The same brownie could or cookie or whatever you want to do, Skittles, could <laughs> affect you another way. So the answer is yes and no. Mm. But mostly yes. But mostly, but mostly yes. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> listeners, check us out for the for for question five, where we ask the infamous business coach of cannabis, Mike Z. Um why is marijuana still illegal on the federal level? Mm. This is going to be a deep discussion. Please. I already hear the helicopters above <laughs> us right now. You know, just talking about it. Tune in next time. Next time. On the next episode of the Eight Question Show. You got to follow the money. And my, you know, you can look at who lobbies against cannabis reform. And my understanding, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, it's primarily two groups. Big Pharma and law enforcement. Really? If mm. I remember correctly, those are the, or maybe when I say law enforcement, I mean law enforcement and prisons.